Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be making some low poly bottles here. We're going to be using UModeler, the uh, paid asset for Unity. You can check out the link to this below to um, buy it if you want to. So we've done two tutorials to date, I believe, on UModeler, and I thought just making some simple bottles would be great uh, since it's a really common. Um, asset that we use in games and stuff like that and we can use lots of variations and you can have them more realistic or sort of more cartoony we have some potioning bottles and stuff now for this series just so you know where I'm at um, I'm planning to continue making some different assets here and I think I've decided to make sort of like a wizard's um, scene will make maybe a certain isometric one so these are some more things that we're going to keep uh, modeling if you follow through with me but for today we're just going to focus on making these bottles and they're super simple to do uh, one last note before we begin here is that if you find these tutorials a little too slow you can always speed them up in YouTube as well as you can always just mute me and you know set to times two in the speed and just follow what I'm doing visually Okay, uh, let's uh, actually start. So we can just add a new 3D object and mesh with the modeler. I'm not going to use a box, but instead I'm going to use a cylinder. I think 12 sides is about the right amount for me. You can go up to 16 if you want something a little more smooth. Uh, once you get below 8, it's going to start looking a little bit boxy. So just click down and drag up. Let's make sure we have our status and commentary on. That's good. And anything like this is probably going to do for you. You can grab the face and just drag this out a bit if you want to whatever size you want. And something like this looks good for me. Maybe it's the height of a wine bottle or something. The next thing we're going to do is just add some edge loops. And we can do this using the loop slice. Just use the loop slice tool. Hold your mouse over, roll up the mouse wheel until you get some slices. And I think I'm going to do around that. I think it's about five. You can push escape to get out of this tool. And I'm going to grab the edge tool, which you could hit two if you want to. Oh, maybe not. Two, I guess, changes this into orthographic. So you can grab that and just double click. And I'm going to drag this one down to the bottom. And the reason for this is, I'll show you, we can just grab this bottom face like this, then grab our scale tool, and we can scale this down, and now we have a nice uh, rounded bottom to our bottle to give it a little bit of realism. So the rest of these edge loops, let's grab our edge loop tool. We're just going to move these up out of the way for now. I may have too many, I may not have enough, I don't know. We'll see. So I'll move this one up to here. So this will be the neck. So again, we'll grab the scale tool. And that's not what I want. I'm going to leave that one there. All right, we'll just grab this one and put it here. So when you have two edge loops next to each other like this, they can uh, help block the, the size change. So if you watch and I scale this one, it will keep this area below intact. And you know how far apart they are will um, change how quickly it transitions. So something like this is probably enough for me. Then I'm going to grab this last one and bring it up to the top. And here. So now we can change this one. And as you can see, we already start to have a bottle shape. I can adjust these two edge loops. I can grab this one. But this one you can't grab the same way. It doesn't work. There's no double click. Uh, so what we can do instead is grab um, two faces and hit loop. And we'll loop around. And now we can uh, just scale out these actual faces have a, a fairly similar effect. Something like this. 
can always readjust these as you want to have sort of more or less whatever effect you're looking for. And then that's good for me. Um, maybe I'll bring this one in just a little bit. Anyways, as you guess, you can sort of infinitely play with this until you get the bottle the way you want it to look. Then we just grab the face on top here. And you can use the insert tool here or hit I for insert. Let's see. Hit I for insert. And we just scale this down to whatever size I want. Grab the face and if you hold shift and down, you can extrude extrude in or you could use the push pull if you wanted to. They both work. And now we have a nice hole on top for the bottle. And um, you can always add more edge loops to this after as well to make more adjustments. So I, I want mine to look a little more cartoony. And to do that I'm going to go loop slice, roll in, tap two more, just quickly grab these and grab this one. Let's see. Um, hit scale and I'm just going to bring these in a little bit. So now we, we have a little more shape here to this. <coughs> now lastly, if we um, toggle out of this, it, it's still fairly square. You can see all of these edges. There's like an edge right here, an edge here and here. And it's not just the, the uh, texture, but you can actually see it quite well. So we can fix that up quite quickly by using smoothing groups. And I touched upon this a little bit before, but I'm going to add a smooth group here. And let's just go back to here. I am on global. Okay, let's grab two of these next to each other. Hit loop, and then I'm going to go down and under um, surface we have smoothing group. So go smoothing group, and just add group, and it will add everything into this smoothing group. Uh, you know, you could name these whatever you want, um, but I, you know, I'm not going to just because it's. It's um, you know a little time consuming to do that, so it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is add everything in a group that's sort of within one area. So this, for example, the angle between these two is you know probably pretty close to 45 degrees, and I want it to sort of crease here, not try and smooth over this line. So I'm going to put it into a separate group, and I believe this is how smoothing groups works here in this program. Um, you know, which is similar to uh, other programs. So we'll just choose a loop, grab two, choose a loop, grab two, choose a loop. So again, this will be another smoothing group because I want it separate from this um, top one. So I'll just choose uh, smoothing group, add group, and that's enough. I'll just grab these two, uh, say loop. I should probably figure out the hot key for the loop. <laughs> add another group. One, two, go up and say loop, and go back down to smoothing and say add another group. Go one, two. And as you can see, sometimes this process is a little bit tedious, but the result looks good in the end. And then I'll add one more smoothing group. And then that's the result. So actually, I probably should have made a copy of it before without the smoothing groups. But really, when you look at it now, you can see that you can't identify any edges here except for by the material. So that really is a nice um, result here, considering we only use 12 sides. You know, if without smoothing, we would have had to use you know like 64 sides or something to get something that is similar to this. And then now that you have one of these, you can just, you know, um, duplicate it by going Control D in Unity, you know, opening this up again, the object, and saying, you know, I want something different. And we can um, do some nice selections here by just choosing the angle properly and tapping F like this. So F will center everything, and you can hit on right and it's going to change us into orthographic view and when you're selecting things make sure that this under properties select only visible is unchecked because what we're going to do is just grab things 
like this by using a box select and then we can just adjust the entire section this way. So this is a handy way to do things to just sort of speed things up for us. You know, we could have a big fat bottle like this, and uh, you know, maybe I want it fat in here. Again, I just sort of use a box select, and then I can scale it. And now, if we go back to object mode, you can see now we have two bottles that are, are fairly different right away. So we can just sort of continue along this path, and we have a bunch of different bottles, and you have some different variations within just you know a minute or less. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you liked it. And we're going to have a couple of more, and we're just going to continue on with our medieval uh, or wizard or something type theme until we have sort of enough props to fill a nice little low poly orthographic or uh, isometric scene. Okay, until next time, guys.